Welcome everyone to another BuildShip demo day. We have a very interesting demo that we're going to be building from scratch, node by node. We're going to be building a multimodal API. And if anyone's unfamiliar with what we mean by when we say multimodal, we're just talking about an API or system that has the ability to understand and process multiple data types. So this can be images, text, or even sound. But in this demo, we'll be focusing on just image and text. And so we're gonna be building an API endpoint that has the ability to change the mode of output based on the nature of a given prompt. So I'll just show a quick demo of what we'll be building and then we'll get to creating our workflow. So here I have a BuildShip API endpoint and you can see that it you need to pass in a query parameter, in this case, a prompt, and then the prompt value. So in this case, you can see that I'm just sending a horse running down the road cinematic, right? So we, as humans, we know that this is for image generation, right? But when we run this, we're going to see that our API also knows this as well. And we're going to be showing two ways how you can build this. In the first scenario, we're going to be cheating a little bit. So we're going to be forcing the client to pass the request type, which can be either an image or text. And then in the final way, we're, we're going to be doing this a little bit smarter by utilizing the full capabilities of LLMs, in this case, GPT, to help us with deciding if the prompt is for image or text generation. But you can see that we received our image here. So if we paste this in, we do, in fact, get a horse running down the road. <laughs> and But let's change the prompt now to something that is for text generation. So uh, let's just do something simple, like a futurist uh, technique. So now our mode of output will change here. Instead of an image, we get back a text response and we get back a stroke byte in case anyone is interested for a futuristic pet name. But without further ado, that's basically what we're going to be building. So now I'm going to go into BuildShip and we're going to start building this workflow. So the first thing we'll do is create a brand new workflow here. And as usual, you'll have to select a trigger. Of course, we'll be building a publicly accessible API endpoint. So we'll select the REST API call for our trigger. And we're just going to need to customize this a bit. So for the path, let's just use smart generate for now. And we can leave the method as get. So if you notice in the demo, we are passing a query parameter prompt, right? And like I mentioned, we're going to be doing this in two ways. The first way, we're going to send a prompt, but we're also going to send the request type so that we can know which output type to generate. And the way that I like to handle query params in BuildShip is by using a utility node called get query parameter. So I like to use this node because, you know, when you're looking at a workflow, you have immediately, you, you can visualize, okay, the query params that are required by a particular workflow. In this case, we're going to set the query key to prompt and we're going to make this required so that the, the client has to send this in the request. Okay. So we need a second query param. So let's add it. And. This one will be for the request type, right? So this will either be image or text, and we could just name this type. Great. However, this can be a little confusing because you can see here in our overview panel, we have two nodes that have the same name. So we can easily change, the, rename the node here. So this one, let's call it get prompt query param, and let's call this one get type query param. Right now we're going to need to add some sort of conditional logic to our workflow to determine based on the request type. If it's an image, we want to generate an image using one of our stable diffusion nodes. If it's for text, then we want to just use the OpenAI chat node to generate text. So to do that, we'll use a branch. So let's add this. And now. This takes in a condition, but in our case, we will pass the condition as an expression value. So we're just going to select expression and here we'll select the type query param. 
So the first one is the prompt, but we want the type in this case. So we're going to say value. And then here we can pass in a conditional operator. In this case, we're just going to check if it equals to image. All right. So we're going to assume that the client can send either image or text. But I should also mention, if you're unfamiliar what an expression value is in Bellship, it just gives you the ability to dynamically combine or use values returned from other nodes in your input values so that you can create dynamic output values, right? So in this case, again, we're just creating a branch here with a basic condition that's going to check if our request type is set to image, then what we want to do is we want to generate an image and we want to return that back to the client, right? So again, we're going to go this time add to add a node, but from our replicate group. And we have this very useful stability AI image generation node that we can use. Great. So you're going to need to fill in your replicate API key for this one. So we already have a replicate API key, but you can easily create one by just going to secrets, add secret, just add a new secret and just enter the name and the value. Now let's continue configuring our node. So the input prompt is this bit here, right? So this query parameter that contains the prompt that we will use to generate the image. So we're going to select that this time from our get from query param. So let's just insert that. And so the defaults here with in height, we can just leave it at 1024 by 1024. That's great. So this node, depending on the condition we specified in our branch, will generate an image for us. But the last thing that we need to do is we just need to return the image. So that's very easy. Let's just add a return node. So we're going to add a return node. Let's just set the status here to OK. And then the value, we can get it from the stability AI image generation node. So in BuildShip, we build workflows. A workflow is a combination of nodes and nodes can consume the values returned from other nodes. In this case, we're going to be using the image URL returned from our image generation node. Great. So that's one side of the logic completed. Now we just need to handle the scenario where the request type is set to text and we're going to need to generate text, return text for the user using the OpenAI chat node. So let's do that. We'll go again, add a new node and this stack. We're going to go to OpenAI and we're going to use the OpenAI chat node. Great. So here, let's start configuring the values we need to enter. So a system prompt, let's just enter something basic. Return your best replies. Of course, you guys can customize this however you want. Everything here is fully customizable. The OpenAI secret, again, I'll just select that because we already have one. The next thing that we need to fill in here is the user request. Again, this will be our prompt. So we know how to get that. We just go to the get prompt query param and we just select value there. Okay. Really the last thing that we need here is to select the model we want to use. So we're going to go with GPT-4. Nice. Okay. We're almost there. We just need to add a return here to return the text generated by GPT. So we're going to go create. Add a new return, status code, OK. And the value we're going to get from this open AI chat node, the output will contain the GPT generated text. OK, so just like that, we created a very basic multimodal API, very basic in that. And we're cheating a little bit here, as I mentioned, because we are enforcing the client to specify the type of output we want. But let's just deploy this and give this a test. Great. So the deployment is successful. So we'll copy the endpoint URL now and we'll just paste it here. Okay. So prompt, this is good. We don't need to change this. We do need to add a second query parameter. If you remember, we called it type. So. Let's add it tight and remember this can be either an image, a text. So let's try 
text first and yeah. see if we get back quantum pause. Okay, interesting. <laughs> now let's give it a try for image generation. So what will change here is the type. So instead of text, we'll say image. And what we'll say here is for the prompt, let's say, I don't know, something random like a man eating it's a, in space cinematic. Okay. We do, in fact, get back an image. Okay. Let's see what we got back. <laughs> there are definitely some men in space eating pizza. Okay. So that's working. Great. Where, because we like to build things the smart way, we're not satisfied with this. Okay. We can definitely prove this. As I mentioned, this type parameter here, having to enforce the client to specify this is a drag. We want to remove this. And now what we want to do is we want to leverage the power of GPT to analyze the prompt. So we're going to have GPT analyze this prompt and determine for us if this prompt is for text generation or image generation. And based on that, we will handle the logic, right? In our workflow. So this is very easy to do. Let's just head back to our workflow. And first we're going to get rid of this type query param because we're not going to be needing it anymore. So let's just delete. Now here, just before our branch, we'll add a new OpenAI chat node. So just head to the OpenAI group and add a new node. And for the system prompt, let me just show you what we'll be using. So I don't, I don't want to bore you guys with me having to type this, but you can see this is the prompt that we'll be using. And basically we're just telling GPT to carefully analyze the text that we give it and check if it's for generating a text or image. And if it's for generating an image, we will, we we're telling it to just return the string text. If it's for image, then just return the string image. So let's take this prompt and we will be using this for our system prompt here. Okay. We need to add our OpenAI secret again. The user requests again, we're just going to get this from the get prompt query param node. So let's just do that. Get the value. And we want to use GPT-4. Once this node is executed, at the end, we expect either two string values. It can be either image or text, right? Here, we need to change our expression value that we're using in the branch just a bit. So now, instead of using that get parameter that we removed, you can see that we're getting a little error indication telling us that variable no longer exists. So we can just click on this and select the opening a chat output. So as I mentioned again, we're expecting that this output based on the nature of our prompt will be either image or text. And so if it's equal to image, we want to leave our logic the same. So we just want to generate the image using our stability AI image generation node and just return image. If it's a text, we're going to use or same OpenAI chat node to generate the text and return that back to the client, right? Let's redeploy. Great, it's successful. We already have the endpoint in our API client here. And so we've removed the request type, right? So all we need to pass now is the prompt. And in this case, let's change it just so we get back a different image. So let's say a horse running down the road. And let's see what we get back here. Okay, let's see if we do in fact get the horse. Yeah. So we're getting that still, so that's great. Now let's try the one for text generation. So here, let's say a very short story about a man obsessed with pizza. Okay. That's not so short, but <laughs> anyways, it's still a story 
You saw just now how we built this from scratch and how we build this entirely in low code style. So every single thing that we included here in this workflow, we used from the node verse. So in our nodes library, that's everything we're using. And just like that, you can build a very basic, but still very interesting multimodal API. And I just want to add here, coming to an end that we'll be adding this as a template so that you guys can test it out in your own workspace and customize it however you want.